Now that we're able to talk to the Yelp API and get proper data back, the goal for this video is to actually leverage the power of Retrofit and JSON and turn the response into data classes that we can use in our application. So right now we're kind of throwing away a lot of the value of JSON, which is a converter, because the data that we're getting back from the Yelp API, we're calling it as any, which is basically a generic object in Kotlin. Instead, we'd like to take the data, which is always going to follow the same format as described in the API, and turn that into actual Yelp restaurants, which we'll then use to display inside of a list or a recycler view. In order to make this conversion process happen, what we need to do is exactly mirror the structure of the JSON that we get back from our API call. So I'm going to scroll down and let's take a look at what is the response body. Like we talked about, it has three keys, total, businesses, and region. And within that there are other objects so for each object that we care about we need to define an analogous model in kotlin a data class corresponding to that same structure so the top level is going to be this structure which contains these three keys so that's the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to define all of these data classes in a another file that i'm going to call yelp data classes the first data class we'll define is something called Yelp search result, which represents the top level JSON object in the response containing three keys. Retrofit and JSON will look at the data coming back from the API and then try to transform it according to the keys that are defined here. So we need to call out the name of the key. So it'll be total, for example, for the first one, it has a resulting value of an integer. So we'll say val total, and this is an int. And then we want to do something similar for the other key. So the one that we really care about is called businesses. And this is going to be a list of businesses. So we'll call it restaurants. And Yelp restaurant is going to be another data class that we define. The idea of Yelp restaurant is to mirror this JSON object, which represents one business or restaurant on Yelp. So just to start out, let's parse out the name field. The serialized name is actually name. And this is going to be of type string. And one thing to note here is that there's no need to parse out every field from the JSON. So you'll remember that there is one more key in the Yelp search result object, which is called region. But we don't actually care about that because we're not displaying it in the UI. So I'm not parsing it out here. Even total, we don't really care about that. So we could have left that out. The only thing that we are really using for display purposes is this key called businesses, which we're calling restaurants. Now that we've defined Yelp search result, let's actually use it inside of Yelp service. So the callback will return a Yelp search result object. So now in main activity, we need to update the callback to use Yelp search result. And that means each of these also has to get updated. And let's try it now. So if we debug the app again, let's go inside of the onResponse method and see if we're actually constructing these objects properly. So we expect to see a list of these Yelp restaurant objects that we've defined, and each of them should have a name field. So we open up response, body, and now we do see restaurants. And you can see that there's Yelp restaurant, and it has one field filled out called name which is perfect. That's exactly what we expect. So that means that JSON is doing its job correctly of converting the data that we get back into a Yelp search result. And inside the Yelp search result, we are maintaining a list of Yelp restaurant. So now we're going to do a similar process for each of the other attributes inside of the restaurant that we care about. For example, review count, image URL, and so on. Now what I've done here is I've gone ahead with the straightforward attributes of the Yelp restaurant. So name, rating, price, number of views, distance in meters, and image URL. These are all simple attributes that are on the top level object of the Yelp restaurant. One thing to note is that there's no need to actually specify a serialized name if the name of the parameter in the object exactly matches the name of the variable in Kotlin. So that's the case for name, rating, and price. If you go back to the sample data, rating, price, and name exactly match. The reason I had to specify serialized name here is because I'm calling review count something else. I'm calling it num reviews in camel case, whereas the attribute name in JSON 
is review underscore count. And similarly, I'm renaming these other fields, distance and image URL, which is why we need to specify these. There are two more attributes that I would like to be able to parse out of the Yelp restaurant in order to show the completed UI. First is a category for the restaurant, and second is a location. So these are a bit more involved, and you can see why by looking at the JSON data. So first is the category. So what you'll notice is that the category is a key in this JSON object, which has a value of a JSON array. And this JSON array consists of different JSON objects. Each JSON object represents one category. And so this is what we need to now mirror in our data classes. So we need to have one more data class called category. Yelp category. And this contains two fields, alias and title. But really, the only thing we care about is the title, because that's what we're going to use for display purposes. And the attribute name is going to exactly match the variable name. So I don't even need to say serialized name. I'll just say val title, and this is a string. So now we can use this Yelp category in the parsing of Yelp restaurant. So I'll say serialized name, and it's called categories. So I'll say categories, and this is going to be a list of Yelp category. And again, actually, I don't even need to specify serialized name because this exactly matches with the variable name. And finally, the last thing we want is we want to display the first line of the address of each business. So in this example, it'd be 375 Valencia. So again, we have to create a Yelp location object and we don't need to parse out everything. The only thing we need is the address. I'll say data class. Yelp location. And then the only thing we care about here is address. It's going to be of type string. And here I can say location, and this is going to be of type Yelp location. Now, one more thing while we're here that I'm going to add is I'm going to add one method on the Yelp restaurant data class, which will convert the distance in meters that we have as part of the data class and convert it into a distance that we can actually use for the UI. So I'm going to add a function called display distance. And this is going to return to us a string. And the way this will work is I'm going to save the number of miles in one meter as a variable and use that to multiply with the double that we get back here, the number that we get back from distance in meters. And that'll be how we compute the number of miles, which we'll use for display purposes. Great. So now we're formatting it and we are getting some distance in miles and we want to return that as a string properly formatted. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to debug the app and hopefully we should get into the on response again. And now we should have fully formed Yelp restaurant objects. I'm opening up response body. And here you can see, for example, image URL properly filled out, uh, the name and all other data looks pretty good. The one common mistake here is you want to make sure that the type that you assign matches up exactly with the type that's actually being returned from the JSON. So make sure you have int, double and string specified appropriately. The next step is to actually take the data that we have parsed out now from the Yelp API. And finally, we want to display it inside of a recycler view that the user can scroll through.